but how do a camera and a steelix even get there? They surely cannot swim, right? So, this is an island. How are they drawn to this? And actually getting there, we'll see some later in the episode that should not be here. Well, honestly, it's not going that far down. They could just let go and still be pretty unhurt by the fall. They would survive that easily. And for Lucario, who's on the top, you can just go back into the Pokeball and then can be put out again, so he's down there after that. It's official now. We don't need humans anymore in this series. Pikachu can handle that on his own. Oh, of course he's using some random Pokemon he caught somewhere that was, at a one point in time, the most hated Pokemon of them all, instead of, I don't know, his trusty partner who is also a water type starter and starters are always at least a bit popular. But why would he use Intellion, right? Also, yes, Intellion can learn Rain Dance, so no problem there. No reception in a world like this with technology far superior to ours? Yeah, I don't buy that. Especially since this is on an island that is pretty well known, actually. I thought Carlos was based on France, not Germany. So. Ash's and Pikachu's auras are intertwined so much that Lucario can only sense them both as a unit. I wonder if Ash and Pikachu are separated for some reason, if Lucario would be a even be able to find them, each on their own. Or even maybe couldn't even find Ash at all, because Pikachu's not there. That shows how long they have been together. Pikachu's really getting cute this season, I like that. However, it kind of feels like it's not the original one anymore. It kind of feels different. Not like in previous seasons. Huh. Oh, wait. He has a giant wooden spoon? Well, he is an Alakazam user after all, so I guess it fits. That was the best idea, going for the Mega Stone. I mean, him having Mega Evolution and a Pokemon superior in type is kind of unfair. Of course, you can say it's a trial, it's not supposed to be easy, but a trial should be beatable. So, yeah, go for the Mega Stone, that's the right choice. Who'd have thought that it was really him? Well, I could, but this. Ash and Go not even being able to see through Team Rocket's disguises. That's kind of in character for them. So, Satoshi can now Mega Evolve his Lucario and is up against B in his next rank battle, huh? What a coincidence. This episode was kind of only okay ish, nothing really special. Let's see what's the next one, with Ash's battle against B, has in store for us. Episode 85, Rival Showdown, Ash vs. B. Oh, look, fighting friends. I wonder how they got to know each other, with both of them coming from different regions. Probably met on a training journey somewhere along the line. They surely like showing those two having fun. And I have fun watching them having fun. So, give me more of that. Ouch! That is brutal. But if you think about it, a net cannot do much if you are able to put your arms through it. Sure, you're kept in space, but you are still able to hit your enemy if that one closes in on you. So that might not be that good. I mean, we still have to see Mega vs Giga, so obviously Lucario isn't down yet. Kind of breaking the suspension knowing that. That seems to be a good place to Mega Evolve. However, since this episode is almost over, 
we won't see it until the next episode. Okay, Lucario doesn't want to Mega yet. It's not the right time. Well, it has waited for this battle for a long time, so it should get the most enjoyment out of it. Good for you, Lucario. And the greatest champ has appeared. Way too late. But in regards to Dalian, that's kind of what you are counting for. He always gets lost. It's a wonder he finds his way at all. Well, it's a two-parter, so we'll save the conclusion for later. Let's move on! Episode 86, Mega Evolution vs. Gigantamax. Wait, he returns Lucario? What? What about Mega vs. Giga? Also, Corinna states that Ash wants to use his own fighting types against B's fighting types. Like, you know, the most popular fighting type, Pikachu. How about a new evolution for it, like Kikachu? Well, Dalian, I get that leaning back and enjoying the fight is kind of nice, true, but you know, he's a commentator? Just google that word, I think you will find out what I mean. Well, I guess Negiganite is more like no Giganite here. I was about to say that Electric would be good against flying, but I like where this is going here. It's interesting. Also, small Pikachu is pretty cute. Pikachu is becoming a shake weight. This is what I meant in my video about defending Ash as a good trainer. Because in a Pokemon battle, you can do much more than just use the attack as, well, the attack. You can use it in different strategic ways, so you cannot compare this to the games, obviously. Yes, Pikachu is very impressive for keeping up with Ash's strange ideas. However, this is what makes those two strong. You never know what they will pull off, so you cannot prepare yourself for what they are going to do. They will always have a surprise attack on hand. Loosening up your muscles works if you are tied by something like a rope. However, grab locked here is squeezing Pikachu, so Loosening up his muscles just makes Graplock squeeze it even harder. That's not how this will work. Of course, there's the benefit that Pikachu doesn't lose as much energy by fighting against it, but it's not really getting out of the situation like this. He really needs a little folding chair for situations like this, where Pikachu is exhausted from battle. Not only would that be good for Pikachu so he can rest, it would also be very, very adorable. Time for the final battle. Mega, Giga, who will win? Let the fight begin. Giga Machamp, with its glowing fists, closes in. But will four fists be enough to take the win? Mega Lucario, the master of Auras, will be a fierce opponent. But will it also be a slayer of giants? This is such a great scene. This could easily be the final battle in another show. I hope we get more like this in the tournament. The giant has fallen! Even though I am not that fond of these forms, this was a pretty good battle. I enjoyed it quite a lot. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. It has lost its Gigantamax form, but retains its power? How does that work? Although a Pokemon with an ability like that would kind of be interesting. I wonder how that would work out. This finale is really awesome. I would honestly be at the edge of my seat if it wasn't so obvious that Ash will win this time. I mean, it's that third battle. He lost at a draw. And now he will win, obviously. Honestly, I don't like it when they do this. He's standing up again. 
and then falls over stuff. It would just have more of an impact if they just stayed lying down. Let the camera linger on them for a bit, giving the illusion that it might stand back up again and the fight not being over, and then end it. Declare the winner, the opponent stays down, the hero is heroic and has won. This two-parter was really good, even though you already know the outcome. Well, sometimes it's not about the goal, but the journey you take there. And this was a prime example for that. No episode at the beginning of this four-week cycle, so we just have these three. Oh well. At this point, Ash's rank is at 36, while Go has caught a whooping 100 Pokemon. Honestly though, I thought he had more already. Only 801, and soon probably more, to go. Oh, now let's have a look at Team C's stats. By now, at the time of recording this, we have reached a whooping 13,861,549 pounds of trash that were removed from the ocean. Nice going. Keep this up. So, if you'd like this video, why not shoot an aura sphere at the like button? Also, do a high jump kick on the subscribe button and the little bell. Also, check out my Twitch, Twitter and Instagram down below in the description to keep updated for whatever I do. And of course, tell me in the comments below what you thought about these three episodes. So, until next time, bye bye!